Okay. So before start, uh, this is, I'm Sainad. Uh, so before starting, uh, just a quick survey. Uh, how many of you have uh, heard about or used uh, containers here? Okay. Uh, yeah, more than half, I guess. So this talk is like uh, exploring uh, Zen for bas basically container use cases. How can we use Zen and uh, basically take all the advantages of uh, uh, containers, especially uh, Docker? So let's start. Uh, so containers are being uh, adopted uh, widely for ma mainly application development and uh, uh, deploying, they they use uh, OS-based uh, virtualization uh, like namespaces. Uh, one of the technologies um, mainly containers uses. So they are a lightweight alternative, as they are shown. I mean, uh, for uh, compared to traditional VMs. But uh, VMs come traditionally. VMs have their own strong points. For example, one is um, application uh, basically offer better uh, isolation between guests. Uh, so let's uh, see how we can uh, actually complement uh, Docker containers or any any containers for that matter. Uh, if you use uh, VMs uh, in conjunction with uh, containers, so just uh, let's go through the containers for for a brief introduction in order to uh, just uh, get warmed up and then see how we can use VMs. So, so containers today they use mainly uh, three Linux Linux technologies. They are C groups, namespaces, and uh, union file systems. So C groups is for mainly um, resource controlling the applications, and uh, namespaces is for isolation between the applications. And uh, union file systems are to are, li are are like a, a low cost uh, solution for uh, uh, individual mount points for all uh, for applications. So, so, so for example, uh, if we have uh, two applications, uh, we just name them like container A and container B. They basically run on the same uh, uh, same kernel, meaning the same host OS, and uh, they, they are isolated by using uh, namespaces. So, namespaces are just a uh, 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 like couple of syscalls to basically isolate uh, different name uh, different uh, namespaces like uh, uh, PID or network or uh, uh, UTS, for example, and uh, they have their own. They they have their own. Uh, they think that they are the only ones running on their system. So in that manner, uh, we can run multiple uh, applications in containers uh, that are isolated uh, using uh, namespaces. Docker has taken this technology, and uh, they have uh, become like a one-stop uh, solution for basically running, building, as well as uh, packaging them up uh, as uh, containers. Uh, so they have uh, so building and packaging are really the selling point for uh, containers because they uh, they can package the application and its dependencies like uh, middleware or any libraries and then they can basically make the make that package run anywhere uh, on any other system uh, other than uh, basically if some developer uses uh, his own system to develop an application build uh, package it up and then they can deploy it in uh, any other system like production system or test system or any other system so currently the isolation uh, in containers is using namespaces but uh, how are they strong enough and how is the uh, like the ecosystem uh, what are, what is that what is the comments that we notice so this, uh, since the uh, containers run on the same host OS, any vulnerability or any potential uh, uh, potential hole in the kernel can be exploited by um, malicious applications or images, and then they can basically uh, peek into the other application uh, data or uh, what it's what it's doing. So also, if we enable uh, these new uh, Technologies, C groups, and namespaces. Basically, we are introducing more syscalls and uh, uh, basically more attack surface. Uh, and uh, just an online survey saying uh, uh, like uh, like uh, more than 30 percent of uh, Docker images currently uh, current current uh, Im images and are actually having uh, security vulnerabilities. And uh, another thing just noted here is. Uh, 
uh, it's from uh, CTO from Google. He says I mean, uh, for the data center use cases, uh, they are for now they actually uh, uh, trust only VMs as a, uh, as a uh, solution for uh, uh, isolation. So we need, uh, looks like we need better uh, uh, solution for isolation, and that definitely would be uh, using uh, VMs. But how, uh, how we could, uh, like what can we do to run uh, applications or con containers in uh, VMs? So if these are like, these are the containers, and uh, VM containers are, uh, Basically, we go, uh, we, need, we go. We need not have uh, namespaces, so because we use uh, guests uh, as uh, uh, isolation between two containers. So each uh, I just showed uh, like each container is running its own uh, VM here, and also we can group uh, multiple applications or containers within a VM. For example, uh, if you take a multi-tenant uh, cloud provider, uh, he could uh, choose or the client could choose to run. Uh, a single client or a single tenant can choose to run his uh, containers in a single uh, in a single VM uh, because uh, he trusts his own code or uh, applications. So that would actually use uh, less resources uh, because all these uh, he can bunch all these applications within a single VM. So how could we use uh, Zen here uh, in this uh, complete uh, story? So meaning uh, how could we use Zen uh, as an uh, uh, infrastructure or framework. So, uh, these are the, like uh, what I mentioned earlier, like we can group uh, containers from a single tenant onto a VM and uh, the, uh, the infrastructure, for example, Zen is already time tested, and, uh, time tested so we have great infrastructure and uh, how, now we will see how, why PVH. So PVH uh, is a good choice for application containers because we, we we so so for containers it's like it's about uh, boot time so fast to boot or uh, bring uh, bring the application soon so pvh is uh, directly it boots so it boots the guest kernel in uh, directly to the kernel skipping the bios and uh, we get uh, pv performance for disk and network and uh, for cpu and memory we basically use hvm extensions here also apart from these uh, we, PVH is a good choice because uh, we don't need any uh, special uh, like PCI uh, devices uh, to uh, to basically expose a PC, PCI uh, emulate PCI device and uh, use uh, any device model there, so we can get rid of those. For example, uh, web uh, data center web, uh, web web applications or anything they don't they just need a, a disk and network and. Uh, Basically, they don't need any special uh, VFs or any kind of PCI devices. Compared to HVM, uh, it's it's better uh, because uh, there is no QMU uh, device modeling there, and uh, getting rid of QMU, we basically get rid of uh, uh, the memory footprint of the QMU takes on the host, and uh, also we remove the attack surface, uh, basically QMU code. Uh, surface and uh, there is no bias and it's uh, faster to boot. So how? So now we need to like let's look at how we can uh, use. Uh, so Docker another selling point is their, how they package their uh, images and how they can deploy them uh, uh, deploy them anywhere. So let's uh, see how we can uh, use the same Docker image uh, with uh, within the Zen guest or PVS guest. So we uh, we can run uh, a Docker daemon in uh, DOM zero, and uh, so Docker, uh, for example, uses multiple storage backends. Uh, one example is a device mapper backend. So once we run uh, Docker, uh, run for example uh, Ubuntu, it basically creates a container uh, block device uh, on the on the host. So uh, that is a Docker storage device that I mentioned there, and. Uh, if then we can uh, actually launch um, uh, PVH uh, DOMU with uh, exposing the same uh, container block device as the root uh, root device for the uh, PVH guest. So in this way, we can actually use the same uh, Docker image and uh, the advantages that come that comes with the Docker image in terms of their portability uh, with, uh, for example, using Zen containers here. So. 
another uh, uh, another uh, another strong point of uh, docker is their boot time so how can we reduce the boot time here if you use the uh, a VM here. So VMs are typically known for uh, longer boot times, right? So what we can do is uh, we can actually use a, a very slim or minimal kernel that is uh, having a really configurations that are actually needed to boot and then uh, run. And then we use a special, I mean, uh, we can use a init, uh, special init RD or uh, uh, for, for that matter, we can use system D also or any, any kind of unit uh, to basically, the main role of the unit would be to the mount the uh, container root file system and to configure the network. And then uh, we, as I said, we use the same uh, Docker uh, container volume that is being, that is being, that has been created by the Docker daemon on the, on the host. We expose that as a root device to the guest. And networking, we can use the same, uh, same Docker subnet Sorry, so, so Docker, Docker subnet IP and uh, basically if you use Docker subnet IP, we can bridge uh, any other container running on the same host uh, for that, uh, for, uh, so that they can interoperate with each other, these Zen container and, or in, and uh, any other bare metal container running on the same host there. So the three important things we need to configure the guest with are uh, storage. We have to pass the Docker device mapper uh, container volume. And uh, we need to pass the information, what is the entry point for the Docker uh, container, what it wants to run. For example, Docker Ubuntu, and some, if, the, if he says run uh, bash, we have to pass that information to, to the guest uh, so that when it uh, launches the application, it will, launches, it will launch with that uh, as the entry point. And uh, if you want to pass the network IP, we, can pass the, uh, we have to pass the network IP. Uh, for example, Docker has its own subnet uh, where it has its own IPs. So we can pass that information as well to the guest. Uh, yeah, that's it. And um, some, we, have, we made a small uh, 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 comparison between uh, PVH and uh, HVM. Uh, so if you see, uh, PVH is, um, if P PVH takes, uh, sorry, PVH takes around uh, all these numbers are milliseconds. Uh, I missed that uh, there. So PVH takes one th uh, uh, like 1.3 seconds to boot, whereas HVM uh, because it uh, there's a bias to boot also, so it takes around 2.5 seconds here. And uh, yeah, so if just a comparison, so containers versus uh, VM or Zen containers, containers fast to boot, so even VM containers can also boot. Uh, uh, in a second. Uh, in my case, it took a little over a second, but we, if we look closely at uh, the kernel and its configuration, we can make it all maybe boot within a second. And uh, sorry, I didn't show that. So the guest, the guest, or uh, yes, go ahead. Milliseconds. Milliseconds? Yeah. So was the two kinds of the two and four seconds? No sense means the time so this is for uh, basically the Excel tool stack to set up the domain. Before it starts the domain, it is the time it took uh, to create the domain. Set and domain only two hundred milliseconds. Mm -hmm. Set up by, by meaning set up by it means that uh, how to create the Zen store entries and everything uh, device model ready for the domain. Before basically before it unpasses the domain, uh, how much time it took uh, to create the domain. So uh, the guest takes uh, in this in the example in, in our case it took only 16 MB of uh, the guest name guest used only uh, 16 MB. So yeah, it, uh, basically VM containers can also take only tens of uh, megabytes. And uh, since we are using the same Docker image to run within the VM, uh, we are actually taking the advantage of the Docker as well uh, uh, into the VM containers. So for in the for example uh, in the case of PVH uh, uh, the next steps uh, I just listed a couple of them one uh, so Docker supports the mounting host volumes into the container so if you want to support the same feature we need to have a uh, PV solution for our virtual file system and uh, as, as I have shown earlier we can bunch uh, bunch group of applications inside a VM. Uh, uh, then the uh, question comes how to resource control them. So we can use uh, a system D inside the VM as its uh, init, uh, init, uh, init application. And then we can basically resource control those uh, applications inside the VM. Yeah, that's it. Any questions? Yeah, one question. 
Yeah, sure. Um, so you talked about getting things like the uh, the init path and IP address into the VM. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you do that? So in my uh, experiment, I actually did by using uh, uh, I create a new uh, Zen, uh, Zen store entries to just uh, play with. Yeah, Thanks. I just created two new uh, entries uh, for application path and the IP, and then I read it back in the guest. Yeah. Uh, we, normally we can uh, we can use. Uh, any serial communication between the host and the guest and actually pass this information. So is the code already available somewhere to look at? Uh, uh, which which part of the... Is it for the guest or...? No, generally of, of what, what you've done. You know. Oh, so we actually did this manually. We didn't automate <coughs> these things. Ah, okay. Yeah. Do you have any plan to so so like you said today maybe you you didn't really package your solutions somehow but mm -hmm. uh, do you have any plans to release it somewhere that is more widely available or uh, directly usable for users we have plan i mean uh, we actually plan to uh, do everything the, i mean integrate this flow into the docker but uh, yeah we we would do that uh, yeah we, Um, can I ask you how how your solution is different to Hyper? So, so it's not a difference. Uh, it's not a different solution. It's just the same concept. Mm -hmm. uh, so, we just use different uh, kernel and uh, init are uh, Yeah, the part difference. Yeah, that, but the concept is the same. Okay. So uh, one of the strong points of containers usually is uh, uh, d higher density, uh, at least is mm -hmm. what is maintained. So have you done any measurement on that, or do you have any view on whether memory deduplication would help? Or no, we haven't about? done that. We just measured the guest memory, yeah, that's it. Okay, so that's it then, no more questions.